One of the codes I live my life by. <laughs> Always a good start. <laughs> is that my appearance should be in no way noteworthy. But then again, not so unnoteworthy as to be in itself noteworthy. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Well, if it is true, you're certainly carrying it off. <laughs> <laughs> when did you decide on this code? It didn't happen suddenly. It just, you know... It sort of developed. Well, the way I felt comfortable being yeah. sort of gradually formed into the, the philosophy, yeah. and I don't think that's too grandiose a term, that, <laughs> <I've>, <laughs> that I have read off a card for you yeah. today. <laughs> I would say, you're, since you've got a beard, yeah. you have become more noteworthy. The answer to that is, I've enjoyed growing a beard. But you're right, because I've grown a beard, some people have said, oh, I see you've grown a beard, or he's got a beard, look at his beard. And I hate Can those I just moments. put you up on the point? I deeply hate <laughs> those moments of being physically noticed. <laughs> have, you have you really enjoyed growing a beard? Well, no, well, that's what's so odd. I mean, I haven't, like, hugely enjoyed it. It's not no. been like a brilliant roller coaster. <laughs> but, but it's just very, very slightly I've enjoyed it, and very slightly also I've had a sense of achievement. Of course, it's, it is no achievement. It's actually a failure in personal hygiene. <laughs> but, but it feels like an achievement. But you, did, you surely went through the difficult, itchy stage. I did go through this. No one enjoys that. No. no I, I call them my teens. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you make these rules about the, everything? Uh, are the underpants you're wearing unnoteworthy enough to be on. You know what I'm saying, are they? No, no I, I don't think. Sorry, I, let's start again. Are you wearing underwear? <laughs> uh, yes. OK. And I don't want to sound too sexy, but yes. Oh. <laughs> I don't want to sound too sexy, but no. Oh. Under my underwear, I'm naked. Oh. <laughs> David, I yeah. want to know not what you consider noteworthy, I want to know what you consider so unnoteworthy that it becomes noteworthy. A grey tie. If you were in a suit, and like you're in a suit-wearing scenario, yes. and you wore a grey tie, that would be so unnoteworthy as to be in itself noteworthy. So a grey tie... It could be so colourless, so not wanting to draw the eye, it would draw the eye. It's how you spot spies, isn't it? People who are just trying, trying to... to blend in so much, they blend it in so much they're noticeable. It's true. Isn't like it? a chameleon. If there was a chameleon in here, yeah. it would stand out. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it, if there was a comedian in here, it's... Uh... <laughs> The worrying round of applause on the subject of our <laughs> Is it true or is it a lie? Make your decision. I think it's true. I think it's very plausible that David would uh, be like that, yeah. OK. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's true. True. I'll yep. go in my team true, and true, say true. true. All saying true. David, truth <laughs> or lie? Yes, well, of course it's true. <laughs> <laughs> For three weeks, I was listed as a missing person by Interpol. <laughs> wow. Uh, when did this happen? In the mid-90s. Where were you? Had you, had you actually disappeared? Like... I was in Morocco. What were you doing there? I was on a bike ride in Spain. <laughs> you, were on, you were on a bike ride in Spain in Morocco. <laughs> to chat with my client. <laughs> <laughs> what happened was I met someone in Spain on a train. A Moroccan so, man. On, was, was, was this bike ride in Spain happening on the train? <laughs> was it, it was like, because I know that you get those Spanish, Spanish bike rides on trains in Morocco. <laughs> it's, it's probably one of those. No, it was, there was bad weather. And that's why I took the train from the north of Spain to the south of Spain, because apparently, according to the local newspaper, there was better, more agreeable bicycling weather. How did you then get into Morocco, though? That is the... because I met that Moroccan bloke on the train. <laughs> and, which, and... Which Moroccan bloke? Yeah, do you have a name? Uh, I, I can't quite remember, but it was Mohammed or something. <laughs> but Mohammed the Moroccan, well, you met on, <laughs> on the train in Spain. He asked me if I wanted to join him to go to Morocco. And then I thought, well, I've never been outside Europe. In for penny, in for pound. So, uh, <laughs> so, so you were picked up 
by a strange Moroccan on a, on a train and agreed to go back to Morocco with him. What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> How, how did you find out that you were on the Interpol list? I realised only once I rang my parents, once I was back in Spain, and I rang my parents, and for them it was like someone found them from beyond the grave. <laughs> <laughs> so, so why didn't you ring your parents from Morocco? Because that man, that Mohammed... He, <laughs> he you remember, remember Mohammed, don't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> The man on the train. The Moroccan on the, the Moroccan train. The Moroccan on the train yeah, who invited yeah. him back to his house. So, yeah. and then when I was staying uh, with Mustafa and his family. <laughs> 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 From what uh, port did you leave Spain and into which port did you enter Good Morocco? Question. question. Well, we left Spain, if I remember correctly, from Alcaceras and went over to Suta which is one of the two Spanish enclaves in the north of Morocco. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've just clutched victory from the jaws of defeat. <laughs> How was it then resolved? How did you end up getting off of the list? Well, hang on a minute, we're jumping ahead. Yeah, yeah. What the yeah hell he's allowed to do that, him, isn't he? <laughs> 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 what, what were you doing? I was travelling... Uh, with, uh, with, uh, no, uh, Mohammed. Uh, Mohammed. Mohammed. Uh, <laughs> my client is getting mixed up because at passport control they said he must have a passport. <laughs> and he's getting a bit mixed up with the name. I'm curious as to the fact that Interpol has a missing persons list. Yeah, no, what happened is my uh, parents uh, got involved and they got Interpol involved. Right. And I sent a few postcards, one of them, to my friend Mark. And on that postcard, I wrote, I've joined the Foreign Legion. <laughs> Probably see you never again, have a good life or something. And then, Mark being a quite clever boy, so, OK, with this postcard, I can have a lot of fun. I go round Henning's parents and say them something along the lines of, oh, uh, Herr Wien, Frau Wien, you might be interested in this. Sorry, so your friend Mark... Yes. ..used this postcard to mentally torture your parents. <laughs> I'll make his parents think he's disappeared forever for a laugh. Well, it's German sense of humour. <laughs> About this, uh, about this Moroccan chap who we're calling Mohammed. He hadn't been home for many, many years, and so we couldn't take the boat straight to Morocco. We had to go to one of the Spanish enclaves because he had to collect a suitcase full of books from a cafe <laughs> in <Full> Ceuta. <laughs> why, why did he have a suitcase full of books? Because someone left them there for him. <laughs> but why books? In a suitcase. Well, that is, it was back in the mid 90s, people were still reading. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he went to a cafe in the Spanish enclave of Morocco yes. to collect a suitcase which he told you was full of books. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose a friend of his left them there. Yes, but why? I mean, you know what it sometimes is like, isn't it? Like, uh, well, I can't quite think of it in <laughs> <laughs> But if he could, it would be like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, this Interpol list that you were on, can you just elaborate on how your parents got you onto it? Well, they rang the consulate and they rang which all sorts consulate? of... Which consulate? The German one. Which, and... which German consulate? Well, the one in Morocco. They, they, they didn't the ring the police, they rang the German consulate in Morocco. Well, that's how you would go about it, wouldn't you? It's no good know. ringing your local Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> and what happens then with the list? Do you just... Th they have to tell Interpol, stop yeah. looking for Henning. We yeah, found I suppose it. so, yeah. Well, did they? <laughs> for all My we know, they're still like... looking for you now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm safe! <laughs> So what do you think, David? Does, that, does any of that have the ring of truth, or has he made all that up? What do you think, Kirsty? I think it's so odd and inconsistent and unlikely that it must be true. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm leaning towards, Mark. Well. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I, think, I, I think I think that as well. I think it's true. Yeah. Henning, was that the truth, or were you telling a lie?
Well, this story is true. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's true. Henning was listed as a missing person by Interpol. I once set fire to my house with a box of fireworks. David Mitchell's <laughs> team. Uh, was this on purpose? <laughs> <laughs> it, was, uh, it was done out of ignorance. <laughs> <laughs> what age were you? I was somewhere around about seven. I want to know where you grew up, where a seven-year-old can buy a box of fireworks. I bought them in the shop where, near where I lived in Middlesbrough. It was a box for two and six of standard fireworks. That was the brand. <laughs> standard <laughs> brand. That sounds exciting. <laughs> standard fireworks. Yeah. A normal level of excitement will be intended. <laughs> yeah. For a bonfire night, you will forget. <laughs> <laughs> but it says standard, but yeah. then it's... <laughs> Well, that is it? standard for a firework. Yeah. <laughs> so you're in your home, yeah, and no, you're seven or eight years old. I'm seven, and I'm on my own, yeah. On your okay. own. Yeah, and what it was happens? Late, what, on one of the fireworks, I think it was the sparklers, it said, not suitable for indoor use. Mm -hmm. Which, at that age, makes you think, ah, that ah. means they're OK. Could you just not read the word not when you were being... <laughs> <laughs> Did you think not was the brand? <laughs> <laughs> Go, oh, lovely. I, I love that not brand food. It's not for human consumption. <laughs> I know that logic that says, well, people have obviously tried them indoors. Oh, I've discovered just... they're not suitable. Yeah. <laughs> so therefore, I won't use them indoors because I want to live. If you look at a big firework, it won't say not suitable for indoors. It's, so, it's obvious. Yeah. Right. But well, on the sparklers, everybody. they chose to put it on. So what happened? I lit the sparkler. The, the sparks went into the box of fireworks, a standard box, <gasps> and set them off. And I carried the box of fireworks, now beginning to light, into the kitchen, and I threw them into the kitchen. <laughs> I thought it would be more suitable. <laughs> I think you're right. The kitchen of all the rooms is the most suitable for fireworks, <laughs> isn't it? it because is. of the oven, the gas, the it's... stove, there is fire naturally in the kitchen. Yeah, there's a lot of... And there's more... It's more wiped down... Yes. yes. ...less cloth. <laughs> so, so what happened then? They went off in the, um, What kitchen. was the sound like? Was it bing? <laughs> <laughs> no, these were only standard. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, you know, I, I remember, as I'm sat here now, um, wiping the scorch marks off the floor and thinking that my mum's going to kill me. Yeah. And so I'm going to be in big trouble. Then I went back into the living room, unbeknownst I... to me... Yeah. I dropped one. <gasps> and it was, the living room was completely engulfed in oh. flames. It sounds to me that if you're on your own at home at seven, your mum's pretty laid back anyway. <laughs> <laughs> She said, son, will you sit here and look after these fireworks? <laughs> <laughs> Whilst I go out to the bingo. <laughs> so, you lit the sparkler. A spark went into the standard box. Yes. The box starts to go, you go, uh-oh, I must get them into the most suitable room for fireworks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> kitchen. No need to go beyond the kitchen to the outdoors. Yeah. <laughs> Mum said, don't go out. <laughs> At least one uh, rule in your house. <laughs> <laughs> what time of day did all this happen? This happened mid afternoon. Oh dear, so you didn't really get the benefit of it. Who brought the fire out? I went to next door where Miss Best lived. She was about, bless her, she was about 80. And I knocked on their door and said, My house is on fire. And she said, Do you know, I thought it was. <laughs> 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 so what happened then? She called the fire brigade. They fired their water hoses. Throughout the house, yes, ruining it. even the rooms Ru where there's no ruining, fire. Not, yeah. not ruining it. Yeah, you do know that before they put out fires, it's already ruined, don't you? Lee. You're making this house all wet. It was lovely and warm. Lee. Oh. And it's the water damage yeah. that knackers the yes. house. Which, Is it not yeah. the fire? Not the fire. <laughs> if they would use their boots to put it out. <laughs> Honestly, the yeah. entire house. That's it. I was in a. I was in a family of four children, and we we were homeless. Where, where... <laughs> well, keep it light. No, I'm just saying. Where were all the other kids while you were alone with the fire? Why did you take three They were looking after fireworks you. in other people's houses. <laughs> 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 so when you say you were homeless, how much of the house did the inferno claim? It's gone. 
entire you house. The whole gone. house, whole house gone. Yeah. The whole house burnt whole house down. Burnt down. So how much did you leave in the living room? The fireworks in the kitchen have only caused a few scorches. Yeah. What did you leave in the living room? And now, and now, don't you feel stupid for saying standard fireworks? <laughs> yeah. I tell Not you, really. Well, I think you were stupid. <laughs> they like a sparkler indoors. <laughs> If you don't know what you dropped yeah. in the living room, is there a chance that it's just a coincidence? No, it could be. <laughs> that it might not have been your fault? That's what I said to the press. It's not your fault? <laughs> press? Who, what, what press? Who, who, who did you speak to? Local press. Because they, they came to the house while it was burning? Yeah, you know, they're, they're hats on, trilbies, <laughs> sniffing around. <laughs> With those little bits of paper in the <laughs> Oh, yeah. Were well, they called things like Scoop McLean? <laughs> <laughs> I believe he was called Ron Waffle. <laughs> Sorry, Ron so, Waffle? It was either him or the other ace reporter on the Gazette was John Caramel. It was one of them two. <laughs> Caramel and Waffle. <laughs> <laughs> the question is whether you think Bob has been telling the truth. Well, I, was, I thought it seemed very plausible until we heard about <laughs> caramel and waffle. <laughs> I think he thinks he's telling the truth, but I think what's happened at some point, he's seen a film in which this has happened. He saw backdrop. And is now convinced <laughs> that it happened to him. I think it's a lie. Vera. I, oh, I sort of... I was going to say I want it to be true, but that sounds really horrible. <laughs> and it's, I think I don't. I think it might be true. Well, I think it's true. I think it's true. So you're going to go for true? Yeah. Okay, Bob. Were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? I was telling the truth. <laughs> oh. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I once had a snog with one of the people here on Would I Lie to You Tonight. Whoa. <laughs> One of us, six. Three, yeah, six. <laughs> you... Hang on a minute, I'm here as well. Yeah, six. Yeah, you're one of me. She didn't snog herself. That's true, that's true, that's true. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my word. I think my, my, my poor grasp of mathematics has never been more cruelly exposed. <laughs> <laughs> so, one of us, six people... You, why am I saying one of us, six? I know it wasn't me. One of them, five. <laughs> Was no. it you? It's true. <laughs> I'm Spartacus. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I, I generally... Very I, awkward if all six of us have snogged But <laughs> <laughs> she could only remember one. <laughs> if it's true, will the person remember, or is it like a, a drunken thing, or...? I don't know if they will remember. This is getting awkward. If this is true, oh. this could be very awkward. I don't so know. So, how many years ago? I think it was in, uh, 98. So, 15 years ago. Just the snog? Yeah. Oh, Word. it's going to be David at university, isn't it? Why, did they go to university together? They're both Cambridge, aren't they? We did. Yes. And were you but... in the same... No, but David is quite a lot, quite a lot younger than me, so... Uh, but were you still hanging around the cool. university? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to prey on freshers in Freshers <laughs> Week. <laughs> what you haven't said yet, Mel, is you haven't really painted a lovely picture for us of, of the circumstances, where you yeah. were. Yep. Just talk us through that. It was a works do. Uh, not me. I've never worked in my life. <laughs> <laughs> it was a works do, and everyone had been working very, very hard. <clears throat> it, was a, it was a long series, and it was the end of term party. Stop End of looking series at me, parties. Mel. <laughs> in the what was the, what was the series? Uh, it was the series. England rugby team. <laughs> 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 was it a test series? <laughs> uh, it, was a, it was a show back in the late 90s. Uh, was it Late Lunch? It was called Late Lunch. So the show you did Late Lunch, lunch. was the person you kissed a guest on the show, or were they a regular on it, or...? No, Ryan? we were colleagues. This is a totally new type of round. This, this is... <laughs> <laughs> you stop yeah. trying to work out whether it's true or not, just... Who, who it is. was? <laughs> who was it? <laughs> Wait, who was it that you kissed? <clears throat> was it Rob? <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me when you kissed him, he didn't do that. 
Who was it that you kissed? Dermot. It was Dermot. Dermot? It was Dermot. Wow. Oh. <laughs> oh, wait, this, is, this is a weird one now, because if it's not true, poor Dermot now has got to answer all these questions. <laughs> I don't think you're allowed to question other panellists. Oh, this is not his car. Uh, no, no, we're in new territory. This has never happened before. Rob, my proclamation is thus. You can quiz O'Leary. <laughs> However, oh. he doesn't have to answer unless he so chooses. Well, oh. Oh. to Dermot. be fair, that's true with everyone. <laughs> <laughs> we cannot be legally required to speak. If you Did want to make people to... talk when they don't want to, you have to waterboard them. <laughs> I'm happy to waterboard him if you want to. <laughs> Mel, what yes. was Dermot doing in this show? Dermot was the um, guy responsible for getting the audience in. Has Dermot said if he remembers this? Dermot, uh, do you remember this? That would, that would scupper my team's chance. I can't answer that. Yeah, oh, that's something you mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, were, you were working on... I was working on London. What was your position? I was, uh, well, I was sort of audience researcher, so... Oh, that's Andy, just what she just said, yeah? <laughs> In 1998, were you in a relationship, or was it OK to push you on this? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> you said at the time, Dermot, that you weren't in a relationship. Oh, well, he can't have been there. Yeah. OK. <laughs> so what are you going to say then, uh, Lee? What are you thinking? That's an interesting one, this, isn't it? What I do you think? think? I, it feels plausible. like... Plausible. Do you it's think? It's plausible. It is plausible, it's definitely plausible. I just it's... think O'Leary's been too kind of reticent on the details and the facts. Yeah, yeah. but is he, he could be awkward because he doesn't remember, or he remembers very well and he's trying to play for his team. Gentleman doesn't tell. <laughs> I think it's a lie. You think it's a lie? Based on O'Leary. Matt, what, what are you thinking? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I don't think the dates fit. Lie. Well, go with lie, then. You're saying it's a I, lie? I think it might be true, but I'm going with my team and okay. saying lie. Mel. It was a wonderful, wonderful tale. Was it true, or were you telling a lie? Well, Rob, gents, Dermot, <laughs> I was telling the truth. Oh! <laughs> oh! I can smell if there is a dead fly in the room. Say, I know it sounds ridiculous, <laughs> but I could smell a dead fly in the room. So, uh, it's what you're saying that if there isn't a dead fly in the room, you have no sense of smell. No, that's not what I'm saying. And so, and, and you know damn well that's not what I'm saying, David. No, I can smell if there is a dead fly in the room. I can smell the dead fly. So, is the one? Is there a dead fly in here? Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't smell a dead fly in this room, obviously. This is so what there we is call no... a normal size room. Let's see. OK, a well, yeah. room in my house. How do you prove this? Can you, do you actually sniff it out? Can you actually, like a sniffer dog, you actually find the dead fly with your nose? I or you just go, no, no, no. I never, dead fly I never told you I could find them. You can't locate it, you just know it's somewhere within the walls. <laughs> well, not within the walls. I'm not talking about flies that might have been killed by a serial killer and then sort of plastered. <laughs> yeah, in. yeah. I can't <laughs> smell them. No, I can't smell no. them. No, no. Definitely not. Right. Uh, okay. But you can't locate them, you just know there's somewhere in the room. I can smell if there's a dead fly in the room. So where's... <laughs> <laughs> How yeah. can you put it to the test? Because you might have been in a room in which there was a dead fly and you have not smelt it and said there is no dead fly in this room. And people have believed you uh, and yet I've lurking my... in the corner... It's a good question, Joan. It's a very good question. And I wish that I had a good answer. <laughs> Just by the law of averages, there's been too many times when I've gone in a room and gone, there's a dead fly in this room, and quite often we will see the dead fly. What do you mean Doesn't quite mean often? It has to be always. It has to be always. I can smell if there's a dead fly in the room, so I will go in and go, I, I think there's a dead fly in the room. That's just a polite way of talking, David. I don't go, there is a dead fly in the room! It's a fact every time! This it's room is a way to... I talk, I talk more softly than you, David. Okay. I have a soft... <laughs> I don't show off about yeah. my talents. Okay. I walk in a room and I go, I think there's a dead fly in this room. In fact, no! I think you'll find there is definitely. <laughs> there always is! There always is! 
What does the dead fly smell of? It's a, it's a smell that I, I wouldn't want to describe to a friend. Try. Imagine you're a wine connoisseur. Right. But it's the smell of a dead I'm fly. I'm getting... Get, yeah, uh, what are you getting? I'm getting a, I'm getting a bit of wing. I'm guessing... Uh, <laughs> I'm getting another wing. Uh, and... Uh, how many wings have flies got? Is it two or four? Four. Four. Another wing. <laughs> and... A f uh, no, wait, wait. There's only three wings. I, I, I think I know how this fly died. Um, <laughs> You've not really described the smell there. You, no, you've you described said you... the you've described the body parts of a fly <laughs> while making sniffing noises. Well, I can't. You know, you're a, you're I'm a professional. You're an amateur. How, I'm trying to say it in layman's terms. Well, <laughs> I, earlier on, I was uh, hmm? I came to see you in your dressing room to say hello, and I had a little look in the window, and only now I'm thinking no, there was I... a dead fly in there. And you never mentioned it before you came, and I went, hmm, smell of fly. But I found that 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 smell was soon overpowered, you... Jason. <laughs> <laughs> David, time to make your mind up. Is he telling the truth? Is that whole fly-smelling thing real? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, <laughs> let, let us pay him the respect of pretending to consider it. Um, <laughs> yeah. you, you don't believe him? I do not says, believe when, him. Well, I think lie. <laughs> you think lie? You're saying lie. OK. Lee, were you telling the truth or was that a lie? I've actually started believing it myself. <laughs> It's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Possession. Ah, there's a box under the desk. Just pop the box on the desk and then there's a card inside it. Before you take out the possession, just read the card, please. This is one of the pairs of leg warmers for birds that I have made. <laughs> I would have brought more, but birds are using them. <laughs> Could you show us these leg warmers? I live uh, beside the canal, and the uh, the swans are very unhappy around there. Dickety the swans? <laughs> You've tried to put a leg warmer on a swan. He hasn't tried to. He hasn't tried to. He succeeded. How the hell do you... a swan? <laughs> so they're trying to feed it over the webbing, and he doesn't get cross. It's got a great big. Yeah, beak on us. Everyone on a... knows about this, but if you befriend the swan. <laughs> The first thing, you know you befriend the swan when the wings go up like that, and then generally the next thing they go like that, as in, make, make me leg warmers. That's it. <laughs> they for swans? David, they would break your arm if you went near them. Famously. Oh, famously. No, yeah. That's no. what they do. <laughs> they break your arm and then the no. queen eats them. Yes. <laughs> How do you get them over the feet? Right, got... if, you put, if you put your hand like that and then yeah. try... Yep. Try and get it over there. It's like O.J. Simpson. Stick yep. it on there. That's yep. a swan. That's a swan, yeah, that's a swan. With yeah. the swan, it's all about authority. So watch this. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're... Oh. They're webbed. They're webbed. That's web. no good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They... That's gonna hurt the swan. You've just ripped through no. its webbing. <laughs> the you ones. know when you said swan at the beginning? Yeah. Did you mean sparrow? <laughs> <laughs> David, it's time to take a guess. I mean, I don't know which way you're going to go on this. <laughs> maybe a swan could be able to slip that over its foot, and maybe a swan would derive tremendous warmth from this incredibly thin and flimsy <laughs> and short piece of material going an inconsiderable distance <laughs> up its really rather long leg. I think it's true. Don't say that! <laughs> Sort of, it, that's what happens to your mind in this game. You say, and you start thinking, oh, yeah, of course, the, the fact that he said swan and it seems impossible <laughs> is exactly what's so it's plausible like about it. <laughs> if you people don't start taking this a bit more seriously, I'm going to bring my Uncle Ian out here again. <laughs> so what are you going to go for? I think we're going to say lie. Lie? Um, and it's a lie. I'd just David like to say, tea. Rob, Yes. if it's true, yes. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> David, truth or lie? I'm afraid my tale of swan leg warmers is a lie. No. Oh, thank you, God. Who would have thought it? Who would have thought it? Yes, it's a lie. David doesn't make leg warmers for birds. A little chimpanzee once came to my house for tea. <laughs> David's team, what do you think? 
A, a little chimpanzee. How little? A, a tiny chimp, about this. Hi. And did it come alone? It preceded um, an expected guest. Was that gorilla? <laughs> <laughs> what did it eat? Uh, well, we tried um, Marmite because it was a Sunday afternoon and we were having sort of tea and Marmite toast, uh, and that's what my kids liked. Um, but it turned its nose up at that, so we gave it cheese and tomato sandwiches and she opened them up and took the inside and seemed to be quite happy with that. Probably on a no carbs diet. <laughs> <laughs> What's a chimpanzee doing? Coming round Good question. to your house for tea. <laughs> yeah. She was with the friend who was expected, and the friend who was expected was running late, and she sent the chimpanzee on ahead. <laughs> so, when. Did, so, did the chimpanzee ring the doorbell or knock on the door? Or... Knocked on the door. And you <laughs> answer the door, and there well, is. I, I went to the door, and yeah. my wife said, Who's that? And I said, It's a chimpanzee. <laughs> yeah. She said, what does it want? <laughs> um, <laughs> and the chimpanzee was doing this. <laughs> and I said, I think it wants tea. <laughs> she said, well, ask it in. How did the chimpanzee get to your house? Um, I ordered a taxi. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I'm not a courageous man. If I was answering the door and I saw a chimpanzee, yeah. I wouldn't invite it in for tea. <laughs> I'd be afraid. I'm, I'd, I'm not keen on wasps. Really? And they're, and they're much, much smaller than chimpanzees. <laughs> who, who was the friend? Was it Michael Jackson? I mean, who... Yeah. Who were you receiving? It was a lady that I had worked with um, quite some time before this afternoon. Why did she have a monkey? Because she, did, she, she had very few friends. All right, David, what are you thinking? This sounds peculiar. I think it's peculiar. true. At the moment, I think it's true. What do you think? I don't know. I want to know why she would send it first. A sense of fun, surely. Is it a bit of a joke? Go up there, knock on his door, it'll be amusing. <laughs> what do you think? What I think, I think Charles Dance, a chimp and a cheese sandwich, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Which way are you going to I think mean? we're going to go true, though. You're going to say true, yeah? yeah? OK, Charles Dance, your chimp story. Were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? I'm sorry to say that it's true. <laughs> As a baby, I was regularly fed coffee in my bottle. Lee Max team, what do you make of that? From from birth. I thought you were going to say from your mother's breast. <laughs> <laughs> you were given coffee in the milk. In you got one milky coffee from a very uh, from about the age of three. This is this is not hot coffee, obviously. Yeah, no, it would have been quite warm. Warm milky coffee. And when you got older, did you ever say to your parents why did this happen? Yeah. <laughs> My children like coffee. Nowadays, you can have what they call a uh, kiddie chino. A baby chino, baby sorry. Chino. Baby chino, got it wrong, kiddie chino. <laughs> Actually, a kiddie chino is just a very small pair of trousers. You probably do use them. <laughs> <laughs> if they were putting coffee in your milk... From no, no, they weren't putting coffee in my milk. I was having coffee. Slightly mil milky coffee. Okay, nice. Well, that is the same as putting coffee in milk. <laughs> Coffee. Between putting coffee in milk and putting milk in coffee. What, what is the distinction? Well, it's like the distinction between having a glass of water and going swimming. In the one case, you're putting water in yourself, and the other case, you're putting yourself in water. <laughs> Did they give you other sort of more adult foodstuffs at a very young age? I think I was, I think I was allowed uh, uh, a modicum of booze as a, as a child. Oh, were you? <laughs> At what age were you allowed booze? I like as a baby. That was to offset the coffee buzz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, what, what, what were you given as a child? Lee? Evo stick. <laughs> <laughs> That's glue. Yeah, but that was to stop me getting out the cop. <laughs> <laughs> David, uh, as, a, as a small child, 
What were they bringing you in your quarters? Uh, just a port and a cigar. <laughs> <laughs> Words out of my self parodic mouth. <laughs> um, uh, no, the blood of a pheasant. <laughs> uh, no, uh, Did you say pheasant or peasant? <laughs> Lee, what are you thinking? Is there any truth in this? Which way are you leaning? I don't know. What do you think, guys? I think we're skirting <sighs> on the edge of giving out really bad childcare advice. That, that is true, but I can't help thinking that any parent that's looking at Jimmy and thinking, I want to raise a child like that anyway. <laughs> He's a dodgy parent in the first place. You know what I mean? I think it's nonsense. I think it's nonsense. Nonsense, OK. I, th I think it's a lie. You think okay. it's a lie? Well, we'll say yeah. it's a lie, then. Pretty conclusively, yeah. it's a lie. Jimmy Carr, were you telling us the truth, then, or were you telling a lie? I can tell you it is absolutely true. <laughs> ah! oh. Wow. 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 Yes, it's true. As a baby, Jimmy was regularly fed coffee in his bottle.